What are the top 10 skills to become a successful mechanical design engineer? My name is Kevin Kuto and in this video I am going to highlight 10 most in demand skills to become successful mechanical design engineer. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel if you find this content useful for your career. Engineering knowledge like strength of material, theory of machines, machine design, thermodynamics, heat transfer, fluid mechanics or solid mechanics are the foundational knowledge for design engineers to ensure that the concept you design is robust and works as intended under given working conditions. So learning engineering skills is mandatory for mechanical design engineers. The second very important skill is innovation mindset. Innovation mindset and ability to solve the technical problems by using systematic problem solving methods is critical skill set every design engineer must have in order to come up with the right engineering solutions to the problems. The third skill which is very important is manufacturing knowledge. Part geometry, material and tolerance on dimensions drive manufacturing processes. Part could be manufactured by plastic tools, sheet metal tools, casting or forging dies, followed by machining processes and also by 3D prototyping. Each manufacturing process has dimensional variations, tooling constraints, their own defects and mitigations, post-processing and design-based practices to deliver a production ready part. So design engineers need to study domains like plastics or sheet metals, casting, forging to design parts for manufacturing. DFM or design for manufacturing and DFA which is design for assembly are integral part of design. Plastic and sheet metal are in demand manufacturing domains across industries because most of the automobile, home appliance, aerospace and medical parts are made up of plastics and sheet metal. So this knowledge of manufacturing domains opens up a lot of opportunities for design engineers. The next very important skill is knowledge of engineering drawings. Engineering drawings are representative of your design in order to manufacture the part as intended. Dimensioning and tolerancing includes general tolerances as per ISO standard, engineering fits, engineering graphics and their concepts, GDNT as per ASME Y14.5 or ISO 1101 standards, tolerance stack up analysis for worst case and statistical tolerancing and we do tolerance stack up analysis to verify and optimize dimensions and the tolerances given in the engineering drawings. Tolerance stack up analysis also opens up opportunities for us to optimize the cost and open up the tolerances further. Change management process controls changes into the CAD geometries and engineering drawings through engineering notices or they are also called as ENs. And all these changes are managed in PDM tools such as Windchill by PTC. The next engineering skill is knowledge of NPD or system design processes. NPD or system design process is a step by step process starting from the voice of customer until we get a functionally working design which is production ready. Each phase of NPD process includes inputs, tools, techniques and methodologies to transfer these inputs into outputs. NPD also includes design for X where X could be safety, reliability, craftsmanship, cost, manufacturing, assembly, serviceability, maintenance, packaging and shipping, dimensional variations and also loads. Each concept which we design as a design engineer has to be robust enough to meet all these excess. We need to manage each phase in the NPD process and associated deliverables with the help of project management tools and techniques. Next very important skill every design engineer must study is DFMA and DVP. DFMA stands for Design Failure Modes and Effect Analysis whereas DVP stands for Design Verification Plan which is also called as a test plan. DFMA involves analysis of failure modes 
for each function of the product. We also assess the impact of these failures on the customers and regulatory requirements. We also understand root causes of the failures and suggest remedies in design to prevent the problem from occurring. And eventually, we also design test method to validate each failure mode and its root causes. DFMA provides us severity, occurrence and detection rankings which help us to prioritize the actions of mitigation. DVP or test plan is the result of DFMA which contains all the tests to validate the product. In-depth knowledge of DFMA and DVP helps design engineers to understand their concept and design in great details. The next very important skill every design engineer must strive to learn is the product knowledge. Depending upon the product you are interested in, you can learn automobiles, home appliances, fixtures or tool designing, medical domains, aerospace domain and many more. In automobile itself, we have many subdomains like we have interiors, exteriors, engines. Nowadays, electrical vehicle knowledge is also becoming very important. My suggestion to design engineers, specifically who are in their early phases of career, is not to bind yourself much with the product domains and be open to work in any product domain. It's easy to learn products, relative standards and the working of the product. It's also relatively easy to switch between product domains if you have strong knowledge of other skills which are listed in this video, including manufacturing domains. For example, if you know how to design a plastic part, you can design it in automobile, home appliance, medical or aerospace domains as well. The knowledge of plastics is not going to change as per product. Similarly, if you have good knowledge of GD&T and tolerance stack-up analysis, that knowledge is also going to remain same across all the product groups. Also, please understand that tool design and fixture design are different than product design. Product design involves design of products like door trims, seating system, washing machines, dishwashers, aeroplanes, etc. Whereas tool designers design the tools to manufacture each part specifically in plastic, sheet metals, casting and forging. And fixture design engineers design fixtures to assemble or weld parts together on manufacturing line. The next very important skill is PPAP sign-off documentation. PPAP or production part approval process as per IAPF 16949 standard includes almost 18 documents, records, sample parts for approval of the part for production. Unless PPAP is signed off, production can't begin. So knowledge of PPAP documentation and process is always advantageous for design engineers. Soft skills are always underrated but they are very critical to be successful. Soft skills like oral and written communication, conflict management, presentation skills, risk management, effective team building, leadership skills will take you ahead in your career for sure. The last skill in my list is CAD skills. The popular CAD tools are CATIA V5, Creo, UGNX, SOLIDWORKS, Inventor, AutoCAD, etc. The choice of CAD tool depends upon your choice of industry and nature of work. CATIA and UGNX are very popular with automobile industry, whereas Creo, SOLIDWORKS are very popular with home appliance and other industries. CATIA has great surfacing capabilities where SOLIDWORKS can manage assemblies as well as it is good at part modeling. The cost of SOLIDWORKS is cheaper than CATIA and that's why medium and small scale industries prefer to use SOLIDWORKS. UGNX is good at manufacturing with good surfacing capabilities as well. UGNX is very popular in tool designing. Creo can handle complex assemblies with ease and also good for manufacturing. Creo is very popular with home appliance industries. I suggest that you should master at least one CAD tool based upon your choice of industry. Learning multiple CAD and simulation tools is waste of your time as you never get chance to use all of them and they quickly get outdated. Learn CAD tools as and when needed. You should master at least one CAD software for sure. I hope that this video will help you to prioritize your learning design skills 
to be successful design engineers and yes do not forget to subscribe thank you